So now that I'm doing the 50 hour service on my X758, I'm gonna go ahead and install the uh, front PTO kit for the four wheel drive. So this is the uh, PTO shaft to power front attachments that goes through the front axle. Um, I opted, well, I knew I could install this myself. This is something that you can do. Uh, some people have dealers install it when they order their machines. But basically what this kit does is it allows the power to come from the PTO on the transmission all the way forward and then through this front axle which is housing right here so through that housing right there and come out where that cap is right there so you can power things like a broom or a snowblower something along those lines uh, so you have power to the front of the machine so it's a 2000 rpm pto uh, just like the mid mount deck is a 2000 rpm pto so that's what we're gonna install. Uh, this is a kit. Uh, this, this kit would actually now replace anything for an X748, X585, et cetera, et cetera. It just comes with uh, these electronic, uh, the sensors right here to determine if the shaft is turning, uh, mostly from the standpoint of, uh, so you don't have to do reverse implement operation when you have a front attachment on the machine. The first thing in the manual, is to install the latch plate on underneath the machine to hold up the draft arms. So that's what we're gonna do first. And I've kind of got all the parts segregated right here. We've got our latch, we have a bushing, we've got some hardware, and I've got, you, you will need a 15 millimeter and a 10 millimeter, um, no, sorry, you'll need a 13 millimeter 13 millimeter and a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet set along with a 10 millimeter or a 13 millimeter wrench. Uh, I do know that already. Uh, you might need a 10 millimeter wrench as well. So I would get both. Uh, so I'm gonna get set up under the machine. We're gonna install this latch and then we will move on to the front drive shaft, the front through drive shaft on the uh, front axle. All right, so to install this, we're looking at this hole right here. So this is these are the draft arm right here. We're gonna put the bushing, and I'm gonna try to figure out a way to set you up so you can see this. I think it's gonna be difficult. But we're gonna put the bushing right there, and basically, let me see if I can do this one-handed. So the bushing, this brass bushing right here, goes through this, if I don't drop it to the far side of the tractor, naturally. Let's see if I can reach it from here. Tell you what, this is fantastic cinematography, right? Okay, so let's try this again. So you put the bushing through here, flange side out, which, how do you do that? There's something in the way. Huh. There we go. Okay, so you put the bushing in there, and then install this over the bushing, like so. Basically, it's designed that you pick it up. <clears throat> so this is over the bushing like that. And then you install the cap screw, <clears throat> which I'm gonna go ahead and put you down on the ground and just hopefully you will be able to see that. I think you can see that. So we're right here. Yeah, okay. So maybe a little bit farther forward. Tilt you back a little bit more right here rats hmm. all kinds of in the way all right so now what we're going to do is we've got our bolt and i can't remember if it says a particular way install screw into bushing and through latch plate secure latch plate with lock nut and it shows the lock nut being on the inside so 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this like so and tighten it down now this is where we need the wrench and the 15 millimeter socket now my only concern is if I didn't get an extension seeing if I need an extension So the bushing allows the plate, the latch plate, to swing freely. It's also something that can rattle, so that's good, I guess. And the reason you need this latch plate, so on the older X, like the, the X series, like my X758, why is that like that? There we go. Okay, don't feel like that's all the way on there. Yep, yeah, it is. I think. Oh, I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Uh, let me change my direction here. There's something on the inside of the frame that's causing me some issues. And basically, I don't have any room for tools, and it's like a hydraulic line or something. In fact, that's what it is. It's a hydraulic line. Based on what it's what it's being how it's being held in. So my concern is now I want to make sure that nut is not rubbing. On that hydraulic line so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fix the camera or actually i'm going to turn the camera off so i can look in there and uh see if i can see anything and then i'll show you what's wrong with it all right so here is the back side of this nut or the nut and bolt that we were just working on and i was concerned that hydraulic line right there was going to rub on the nut but it seems like it's okay um, i just didn't want this hydraulic line rubbing so uh, I'm not too concerned about it anymore, but that's the uh, nut on and then the bolt is right there and then that can swing back and forth like so. So that is, I still don't think something's right. I am, uh, let me work on this a little bit more. All right, so after a little bit more fussing, I figured out what happened. The latch itself got caught between the bushing and the bolt. So now it swings freely like it should, so like that. All right, so the next step in our book that I promptly ran over with the creeper is we are supposed to install the self-tapping screw through the tethered pin mounting tab. Well, that looks like fun. The problem is, is I have no earthly idea where that is at. There's tethered pin. So here, oops. This is a great working environment, by the way. So here's our tethered pin. And we have to install this bolt. But I don't know where we install it, right here? That seems kind of stupid. Let me lower the... Uh... I'm gonna lower the draft arms down and see if I can open up some space. Because... You no, know, it's gotta be that one right there. Tell you what, 
these instructions are not the easiest to read. Of course, I wonder if you're supposed to do this on the far side. Let me go over there and look. It doesn't tell you. <laughs> yes, it does. Right side frame hole. I am definitely working on the left side of the tractor. So that's why our hydraulic lines are in the way. Hey, screw up number one. Let me take it all off. All right, so we switched sides and I got it installed. Um, I figured I had already shown this over on the other side, so I didn't need to show it again. Uh, but I got this installed, got the uh, bolt and the nut, the lock nut installed. Uh, one thing I could, I was very, it was very difficult to film putting this keeper on. There's a M6 self-tapping uh, screw right back here uh, on the frame. There was a spot on the frame right back there. Uh, there was no way I was going to videotape that. So, but one suggestion I would have, once you get that screw started, go ahead and put your pin in that way. Because if you don't, that screw will want to rotate that tab around and you'll you, this will be too short when you go to use it. So in the retracted position or the up position to where the, uh, the draft arms can go up and down, it'll look like this. And then you pull it out and you store the draft arms in the up position and it will look like that. And then the draft arms are stored in the up position. So that is the first part of this kit. Took a lot longer than I it should have uh, because of my failure to read the right side of the tractor instead of the left side of the tractor. But we've got that figured out now, so now we can move to the front through axle shaft. I am gonna go ahead and put this back in its normal configuration because I will be using the mower deck still a couple more times. Like that, right there. Okay, on to the front. All right, so first thing we have to do to get this front axle shaft in is it says in the instructions for the uh, X738, X739, X758, serial number 40,000 and above, remove and discard the two cap screws from the front axle. So we're gonna do that first. Now, you would also have to drain the front axle if you were not doing the transaxle oil change. But since I am doing the transaxle oil change, well, that didn't work. Since I am doing the transaxle oil change, um, I don't need to drain the front axle. Maybe, one day. Making sure you can see that. I tell you what, this is a pain. I don't know, the older X-Series does not have these cap screws. Just a matter of removing the plugs and calling it good. All right. I'm pretty sure these cap screws are just to protect those bosses during painting. Okay. those removed so now it says uh, remove the plug from the front and the back of the axle now if I remember correctly to remove this plug all you should need to do is to pop a screwdriver up underneath there maybe Well, let me go find a different tool. 
just had to use a little persuasion. That was it. Not a, I have to get up and get a new tool. I'll show you how to do that in the back. So you pull this plug out like so, and there you go. Now what I would do is I would keep that plug in case you ever need it. Um, in case you ever uh, want to switch machines or something like that. Um, because if you don't, you will have to buy a new one. But there we can see straight through the um, front axle to the back. And uh, now we go to the back and push the back one out and or pull the back one out and then we can work on putting the shaft in. All right, so the next part of this, now that we have the covers off, we need to install a bearing over the fully flined splined shaft. Well, it should go right on there. Obviously, it's not going to. All right, so I messed up and I thought I got a video of it, but I did not. I have installed this bearing right here on the long end, the, the splined end of the shaft, the fully splined end of the shaft. You don't want to put this bearing on the PTO side because this is where the PTO coupler is going to attach. And so there's going to be that collar over it. And this is what you get from the front of the machine. So this is going to come in from the back of the machine. So as the X748 is parked or X758 is parked right now, it's facing that way. So it's going to sit in there like that. You want to install this bearing. Uh, typically, you can uh, run it down a, lot, a decent way and then uh, find something to press on the outside. Um, and you can just kind of tap it into place if you need to. Uh, do not, I'm, I use just a small brass hammer and I just gently tapped on the outside and it did not take much effort at all. Um, so now what you can do is you need to put the snap ring on that keeps the bearing in place. Like that so now the bearing won't come off so now we can install this into the tractor to do that as I mentioned you're going to install it from the back and you are going to uh, push it forward and so what you're also going to do is let's see here it says install bearing over fully splined end of stub shaft install snap ring which we have done install stub shaft into axle from back, fully splined in towards the rear of the tractor. That's what we have, have it oriented right now. Use a brass or rubber mallet and lightly tap shaft into front axle until seated. <clears throat> Install large snap rings into the groove. Install bearing A into the shaft on the front side axle and small, small snap ring into the snap ring groove on the shaft. So that right there. So that is what we're going to do. Although I don't see another There we go. We have another small snap ring. All right, so let's uh, get set up to do that. All right, so we can now install the stub shaft through the front axle. Like so. Just like that. And now you can install the large snap ring hmm. I'm gonna have to get up under there I think I got it but I need to make sure Nope, not quite.
naturally now I can't get the snap ring pliers on there. Go figure. Right? Oops. This thing's gonna come flying out of here in a second. Wow, I have created a fine mess for myself. Basically what I've done is I've got it in there all kinds of sideways and there's really no good way to get it in there. Let's see here. There we go. Got it. Fixed it. Okay. So there's that part. Now we can move on. Now that I've screwed that up, I'm having all kinds of technical difficulties. But, you know, you just work through them. So now we can move around to the front and install the bearing on the front shaft or the front of the shaft. All right, so now we get to install the other bearing and the other two snap rings. So this should be reasonably easy, I hope. Just be able to slide it right over and in there. Hmm. I don't think I got it. There's that, now we can install the big snap ring. That holds the bearing in. So the little snap ring holds the bearing to the shaft and the big snap ring keeps the shaft in the hole or in the, whatever you wanna call it, slot. I know this is probably just an absolutely fantastic video, right? Okay, let's see if I can be a little bit better on this one. Perfect. Got just a little bit to do. There we go. Just like that. Okay, so now what we can do is we can install the seals. So let me go get the seals. <clears throat> All right, so to install the seals, what I have done is I've gone ahead and greased them with grease, so the inside of the seals. Also in the instruction manual, it tells you to cover the splines with electrical tape to prevent seal damage. So I have done that as well, so now Slide this over and then should be able to
just like that. And it turns freely. So now we gotta do the back one. I'll get that done, and then we can install the uh, sensors. All right, so I've done a little bit of pre-assembly on this sensor bracket. Uh, I have attached the sensor to this front bracket, and then using the carriage bolts, I have attached this bracket to the bracket that goes over the front, the front here. So what I need to do is I need to come in here, and we have the two cap screws to install on the Allen headed bolts that we took off a little bit ago. And so, just get in here and install these. Because once I install these, then I have to adjust this assembly right here. Perfect, got enough room. I don't need to go get an extension. There are surprisingly torque values listed in the manual for this thing, um, but obviously you don't wanna just go all gorilla on it, but it's fine, um, in my opinion, if you just get it reasonably tight. Because I think it's like 20, 27 foot pounds, something like that. Uh, it's not exactly what I would call extremely tight. I can check this one and call that good. Now that I've worn the paint off with the ratchet, that's okay. So now what you need to do is you take this shim and you put in between, put my cover off here, and you put the shim right up here and you make sure it's tight, and then you can tighten these carriage bolts and the nuts down. And then you can, the manual specifically says, remove the shim and save for later use. I'm assuming that's if you need to uh, redo anything. And then it's just amount down to uh, hooking the weather connector up, which that should be reasonably easy and we are done so that is how to do the front uh, drive through drive shaft everything spins freely it does mention that in the book and you just take your covers and you put them over there and now they're protected and this machine is good to go if i ever want to put a broom on it so now if you've been waiting you, we can now refill the transaxle